right, what's up, everyone? Welcome back to Life Talks with Brian and Melissa. And today we are here with my nieces, and they live in a military family. So we're going to interview them, um, just chat with them about like what it's like to be in the military as young people, as teenagers. Um, and so we're ready to get rolling. Tell us your names, please. I'm Leah. And I'm Kayla. And um, what is your age? I'm 11. And I'm 14. Next question. How many teeth do you have? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I had to throw that in there. Okay. Seriously, though, word association. Have you ever played this game? Okay, I'm going to say a word. This is real fun. You can play along, too. I'm going to say a word and um, whatever comes to your mind first. You just blurt it out. You ready? Do I get in on this, too? Oh, yes. Of, of course you get in. Okay, so you might have to just say it really loud so the mic picks it up. Okay, okay. so I'm going to say, yeah, the word, and you just say it as fast as you can. Okay, one, two, three, popcorn. Pickles. <laughs> Pickles. Pickles, salt, <laughs> movies. All right, good, good. Um, all right, ready? Water. Mine. <laughs> what? <laughs> okay, um, ready? Okay. Uh, Papa. Uh, Grandpa. <laughs> Dad. Dad. Uh. Okay, last one. Unicorn. <gasps> glitter. Rainbows. Horn. 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 Glitter. What was yours? Rainbows. Rainbows. Awesome. Well, it's a pleasure to be with you ladies today. Um, they are, as I said, in a military family. What um, branch of the military is are you involved in? The Navy. The, the Navy. And who's in the Navy? Our, Our dad. dad. Dad's in the Navy. What kind of service does he do for the Navy? Construction. Well, he's a CB and he normally works on construction. Yeah, so CBs um, are a branch of the Navy that does rebuilding oftentimes, right? They rebuild bases or schools or when there's natural disasters, they go in, right? And so our friend Eric, who we interviewed in the last video, he was also a CB. So that was kind of a cool connection. Had no idea, yeah, but... Not um, but yeah, so Matt, my brother-in-law, is a CB in the Navy. All right, one question I have for you. Um, so what what countries have you been in so far in your lives? Um, Lost count. <laughs> so we, we've been on a lot. So we've been to a couple of the states. Uh, uh, there's only five that we haven't been to. What? No, okay. So <laughs> we've been to Texas. That's where I was born. And then we lived in Mississippi two times. Um, she was born there and then we went back and then Virginia and we've been to Colorado twice, but, um, Guam is like a U.S. territory and we lived there for two years. Um, and then Greece, Greece. we lived there for only seven months cause it was more so like a deployment for my dad, but we wanted to go and visit there. So that was fun. And then Bahrain is our most recent one. Mm -hmm. And then now we're going to California. Yeah. How long were you in Bahrain? Two years. Yeah, two years. A little over two years. And didn't you travel a lot when you guys were in Greece? Yeah. Kind of. Like or like so. afterwards? Yeah, after we went. We took like a European tour, kind of. Cool. Which countries did you go? Germany, Italy, France, France, Italy. Um. <laughs> Okay, so that's definitely different. So most students who go to school are just in the same town that they're born in, right? And you've been already around the world, uh, given where they move your dad. Uh, so that's pretty unique. So that's one thing you got to think about as military family. You're not in any one spot too long. Um, but this leads me to the next question is, yeah, what what's base life like, I guess? You know, I, I don't know if everyone knows that it's kind of set up for like the military families. You know, what's it all about? really depends what base you're at most of the time but some bases don't even have base housing so sometimes we don't even live on there but we spend most of our time there yeah so they have like a they call it a commissary um, um and that's where you get like groceries groceries stuff. or like they have a lot of <laughs> deals and stuff there so you can get like electronics or clothing and that stuff um and the nex has um they have food court it's like a mini mall sometimes mm -hmm. depending on how big it is mm -hmm. and then yeah there's base housing so you can live on base and normally for people that live on base um they have swimming pools or activities to do on base mm -hmm. so yeah do a lot of people get off base or when they live on base do they pretty much stay on base or does it vary um it really depends so it's does it 
seem like some people choose to stay on base the whole time so it's possible to be on base and have everything taken care of or most people go off base too yeah most people would go off base um because base you could pretty much live there it's like a little community you don't really need to live leave um but it's also fun to get off base and go to the places they have wherever you are (laughs) hmm so i might compare it to tell me if i'm wrong like college so it's almost like you could have everything you want if you live in the little college town and you may not know but melissa can confirm this um or you could like commute to college right so you can yeah so kind of two options yeah it is kind of like that um i stayed with them for a little bit when they were in guam and at that point we're living off base but there were people who stayed on base and like they had everything taken care of they have movie theaters and like you said the schools and activities and all your shopping so you didn't have to leave if you didn't feel comfortable but what were some of the exciting adventures about getting off base at some some of the places you lived um, well, we've been a lot of places with beaches, <laughs> so beaches are fun, and then also seeing museums and the zoos, because they don't really have that on base, I guess. Can't really have a zoo on base. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point. Mm-hmm. So, and aquariums, too. Mm-hmm. Oh, and theme parks. That's always yes. fun. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's cool. And also, we, w- we usually, off base, we go in a lot of... <laughs> <laughs> When we were traveling, like sometimes like just on our own, like for fun, um, we would go on a lot of hikes and those were adventures. And I remember one time in uh, Georgia, uh, we went on this really long hike up a mountain and it was just really pretty. Mm-hmm. And that was probably one of the best adventures. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> is that the place with a lot of the stray dogs? Yeah. <laughs> Dad is enlisted in the Navy, but your mom also kind of works with the government. What does she do? She's a civilian. So that's yeah. what they call like people who don't work with the Navy, but they work for the and Navy they can almost. they on base and stuff. Uh-huh. So she basically she, does contracts. She's a contracting specialist, so she does contracting and she hires contractors. Mm-hmm. So... um there's some perks to moving around you know you get to see a lot a little bit more adventurous maybe not as boring but is it hard like having to make friends all the time or how has that been for y'all i don't really have trouble with making friends but it's more getting used to the place it's like whoa they do things a lot differently here. like when we first got here after being two years in bahrain it's like people do things a lot differently here (laughs) like the environment's just a lot more loud i would say I mean, it's loud there, but not, like, <laughs> crazy loud. So mm-hmm. America's louder? America's much louder. Yeah. Yeah. It, is America louder in how they talk or just, like, all the vehicles and, like, the extra um, noise? It's just, like, there's a lot more going on here. It's yeah. Like, busier? I would say, in a way. Like, in the airports and stuff? There's just a lot of people, and they are normally in like one thing like in Bahrain when you go to an airport it's kind of like everyone's on their own they go to their places and it's pretty quiet so yeah it was a bit of a culture shock that maybe just seeing everyone like kind of loud and run around and in like congested areas yeah. okay the thing that yeah treats me probably is friends um which you had a great point on um so do you like keep in contact with depending uh, where you've been like past friends or do you like well we just this is just how the life is you just kind of know them for a couple years and you move on i don't know how that's like do you ever like miss friends or you're just like no we're just going to the next place now oh you definitely miss your friends Mm -hmm. um i have a friend from mississippi she's my favorite person in the whole world and i haven't seen her in oh over two years now um and i really want to see her but it's kind of like can't so you miss them but we stay in contact and stuff so how so uh it's kind of like a every once in a while we just check up on each other cool like on a messenger or something uh yeah (laughs) me and my friends like we (laughs) we go on um like google meets and stuff like constantly like all the time (laughs) we're always texting and calling each other (laughs) so I don't miss them as much since I still can, like, see them and stuff, but virtually. 
Are there any other struggles of being in military life besides the friend thing? Um, well, we move around a lot and we still don't know how to pack, so that's... <laughs> <laughs> kind of just like throw everything in a box and uh-huh. then ship it off. <laughs> yeah, is that hard because you have to like... You buy things, you get rid of things. You buy things, you get rid of things all the time. Um, how does that, yeah, How? what is that process like? And then you're living in new places all the time, so you don't really get, like, your own space. Yeah. Well, actually, so these last couple of years, we have gotten our own room, which is nice. How about family? So I would imagine you might bond closer with your parents uh, and siblings, obviously, because you're really, like, it's you, right? Um, you have friends and such around the base but you're really like a unit we're in america we're all spread out we're all doing different sports or whatever it is right running around the family's not always together so maybe you're closer to your immediate family but do you ever miss like just like extended relatives like grandparents or anything like that uh yeah it is kind of hard being away from them because we don't get to see them a lot that's why we wanted to spend a month with them Mm -hmm. (laughs) but it is nice being close to them Mm -hmm. now that we are (laughs) Do you miss, like, being able to play with cousins or kids, like, family members your own age? It's kind of like, it was like a couple family reunion things that we've seen, but it's not, like, something we're really used to because we haven't done it a lot, so. (laughs) Right, yeah, you don't know another way. What are some of the best parts of being in the military family, do you think? Um, Definitely being able to travel, like, wherever we want. (laughs) Yeah, that is nice, and um, I guess being, we'll be able to be together, I guess, because a lot of, it's a little different for every military family. Sometimes military people, I mean, families can't always be together, so it's definitely nice. We always get to be together. (laughs) Mm -hmm. And, like, friends, like, we treat our family as friends. Like, Kayla, she's not my sister, she's my friend, because she's the one, like, friends, they come and go, Mm -hmm. but... We're always stay with her. <laughs> we're always stuck together. <laughs> yeah, and you guys experience a lot of life together, and that's how friendships are are built a lot of times, right? Um, yeah, maybe can you talk a little bit about what military life is f- like for other families? That was really interesting because um, you probably have friends who aren't with their families all the time. What What are their experiences like? Um. Definitely thing about having a military family is your parents work like a lot and sometimes there's like deployment and so you can (laughs) (laughs) So you're like apart from them sometimes but still feel really close than to others, you know, because you're like yeah, so I guess deployment can be harder for some families um, depending on like because some people have to go into it and um so that can be hard for a lot of kids and stuff, but it, I guess it makes you appreciate your family a lot more because you know what you have and like, we, yeah. <laughs> and, and a lot of, I think more so Air Force people get to stay places, like stay put places longer. So I have a friend that I know and they, um, They get to stay places for, like, four years and stuff. But, like, um, one family member is um, on the other side of the world, and they're in the States with their other parents and stuff. So especially if they're divorced, it's harder like that. Mm -hmm. But, yeah. (laughs) Because then they have to share time, and they're apart. Mm -hmm. So that's even harder. Yeah, Yeah, that's that's just a great uh, thought. I guess I had never really thought about too much but yeah some families you always hear like oh dad's gone for eight months right but you guys get the opportunity to stay together and that's pretty pretty special on not all military families will have that so uh, for anyone considering military you got to think like yeah what kind of life will it be for your family um and does your dad get to choose sort of does he have options like okay you're gonna move next so we know just for our audience he's you guys are just now coming to san diego which is kind of exciting you'll be in the states with you know families not too far but does he generally get to choose or uh so the way it works is they get to they have jobs that they that are offered to them and like say uh we wanted to go to belgium um 
Yeah, Belgium. Belgium. So they put that on the list because there was a job offer there. But it really comes down to what the uh, job officer, I don't know. There's someone that picks the jobs for you to see what would suit best. So you kind of do get a choice to the ones you want, but at, you don't get the 100%. Like, I want to go here. <laughs> it's like, you're more fit for this job, and this job is over here and not over there. But there is a job that's over there. We're most likely going to go here because of this job. It's like... So they consider what you want, but they don't. But you don't get a, the final say. Mm -hmm. What is something that you would like to tell kids who, who don't know about military life? What's something you think they should know? Mm. Um, you definitely have to get used to things that are a lot... You have to get used, definitely, to the different countries that you go to. Like, you have to be respectful to their, like, religion sometimes and stuff, like in Bahrain. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And also, um, at my school in Bahrain, I was in this club called Anchored for Life, and it's where we would, um, like, new military kids that would come to Bahrain, and, like, they were new to it, we would um, just kind of, like, show them around and tell them, like, how to do this and what not to do here. And so, yeah, it definitely depends, like, where you are um, and what you're doing. But also, you just have to kind of get used to things. <laughs> That's what i got to say. <laughs> uh, basically, you just have to appreciate your family because you're stuck with them at the end of the day. <laughs> and um, be lucky for what you have because not a lot of other families or kids get to have the same thing. Like, I know I've... I think I've known a lot of kids that wish they would be able to just stay in one place and not have to move all around all the time. And then there's kids that do get to stay in one place and wish they get to move around. So just have to appreciate, like, you have something that somebody else wants, so. <laughs> okay, yeah, so on a different note, what do you hope to do with your futures? Okay, so I definitely want to be able to travel still and go to places, um, you know, that are cool <laughs> but I also want to um, do a job it's just like a general job that's something that can help the community like maybe just like volunteer for like um, just to be a good citizen and maybe also help like environmental things because uh, mom actually uh, her contracting job for San Diego is environmental contracting so, yeah, maybe something like that might work. I don't know. It's just, like, in general, something that can help. Um, so I would love to be able to live in the U.K. That's my ultimate dream. So maybe in the beginning I won't be able to live there because I want to work with um, people who help keep animals out of laboratories or harmful and cruel experiments. I just want to help animals that shouldn't be treated that way and get them a nice home mm -hmm. uh but yeah i want to live in the uk because it's wonderful there <laughs> so how did you discover that those were um some of your interests was it like a person that like lived a similar life that you saw or did you read read something about that tell us more so um i actually in school i read a lot of articles that have to do with like um how i also watch like documentaries and stuff about how like um just like generally about <laughs> earth and how like some things that people are doing are destroying it and also um <laughs> sorry this fly is really distracting <laughs> um but i also see like read books and stuff of how like um, the impact of how whether you're nice or if you're mean to people and stuff like um, how that affects people's lives and such so yeah I kind of just want to do something that can generally help um, I think I saw a documentary about like animals and stuff so that kind of just like changed my life <laughs> and so yeah I just I've always, I mean, not always, I always wanted to go to Paris and France. I loved France growing up, but then I knew the UK and London was a thing, but, like, I didn't know, like, anything about it. And then when I learned about it, I was like, oh, that's the place. I love that place. <laughs> so, yeah.
So phones is a big thing for teenagers, and adults are always like, why are they on those things all the time? Because we didn't grow up with that. I didn't need it. We just had to go outside or whatever. So what's your favorite maybe thing you like to do on your phone? Um, is there anything you least like about your phone? And some kids might be addicted to their phones. Do you feel like you ever struggle with that, or can you put it down and put it away for days at a time? I don't know. So we're kind of curious about phones and teens. So I'm not that attached to my phone. I still like to go outside. Like one of my favorite things to do is go outside, climb a tree and like sit on a branch and read a book. But I also do like just like scrolling and watching YouTube on (laughs) my phone for like half of my life. (laughs) Um, But yeah, I know it's different for Kayla. (laughs) Uh, Well, I have I have a lot more social media than Leah does. Um, So there's a lot of funny videos that I like to watch just because normally I, there's other things to do, but like, it's not like a, I don't, I'm not addicted to my phone. I just, there's nothing else I really care to do. So I'm just on that just to pass time. And a lot of time it's to text my friends and stuff, just make sure they're alive. <laughs> so, and then we like to play Minecraft a lot on our phones. I like to use it on my laptop though, so. <laughs> Um, I don't know if you've heard much about recent studies that say that um, there's a correlation, though they can't prove this yet, maybe not, that with a lot of teens' um, anxiety and depression, it has been correlated to an increase in use of social media. Do you find that to be accurate, or do you see that in your friends' lives or your own lives? Not really, but I did hear hear of this one thing. It's called nomophobia, and it's a fear of being without your phone. <laughs> and I'm like, people really have that? <laughs> I was like... I mean, there's a lot of... There can be a lot of negative things on there, so that could, you know, put a dent in your mel- mental health, but I don't think it's the main cause. I think there's a lot of other factors to it. It's just... Um, just people in general can sometimes be really and mean and unthoughtful of how other people are so that can definitely put a thing into it and like you can just have a bad mood and then something can make it worse and it's just like well <laughs> so I had a question do you think that people of any age just like in general people are on their phones enough too much or not enough um it's definitely somewhere from enough to too much. <laughs> okay. A lot of people can become very attached to their phones and devices, but at the same time, it's like this is kind of uh, the new generation is a lot of technology, so it's kind of becoming the new normal. Um, but some people can be affected. They can be like they cannot think of simple things because they see things on their phones and they're like, oh yeah, that, that makes so much more sense. And then like, they just become attached to that and that becomes their new opinion on things and stuff. So like, get outside, do something, go on adventures, learn new things, read a book or I don't know, (laughs) do something that can help you see more, um, like open up new experiences and stuff like that. Yeah, rather than just, like, thinking what you see or hear, right? Experience it for yourself. Yeah, yeah, good thought. Um, Like, see real people, not just people on the screen. I mean, they're real people, but that human contact, I can even smell her sometimes. (laughs) But they say, like, there's all this science, right? Just the hormones you pick up on or whatever it is. I don't know much about it, but you just, like, when you're with people, it's so much different than with a plastic screen. Um, Even though the technology can still be great. I always wonder, too, for us adults, too, because, like, I'm on the computer all the time. Like our whole age, so you guys, us, phones, whatever it is, are we all going to look like dogs when we're older? Like <laughs> our necks, you know, like we got to do exercises, bring those things up, you know? So in 2021, what are teens generally just interested in? Like what's cool? What's the fad? What's like grabbing the interest of adolescents at this time in life? Um, I honestly have no idea. <laughs> so it really depends, but I've definitely noticed a spike in um. Like, getting fantasies for yourself. Or, like, definitely people my age. I don't know about, like, 
teen teens but tweens like me and my friends um i'm definitely very interested in like harry potter and hunger games and things like that um it's just like a fantasy to escape in and like instead of like just getting your mind up the real world and stuff definitely notice that like there's a lot of people interested in harry potter now <laughs> like i have this group of friends and we just like we just like role play Harry Potter like for the whole day and stuff. <laughs> it's really fun. A lot of my friends are boys, so I kind of play more video games and stuff. But I do have interest in fashion and stuff and like just putting together a nice outfit or designing something is always fun. Yeah. So in the United States um, during COVID, there are a lot of ups and downs and. Um, there are a lot of different discussions on how we should proceed with regulations and limitations. But in Bahrain, it was quite different. Can you tell us um, what the COVID experience in Bahrain was like for you all? Um, in Bahrain, it was definitely very straightforward at first. Just like lockdown, everything, everyone, no school. <laughs> uh, it was like um, our parents still had to go to work like they had to, but it was like still very limited of people and what you could do. At first, it was just like a complete lockdown. And then it got a little, um, it got like a little open and then it went straight back down to lockdown. Um, but I saw um, like things of like Karens and stuff and they're like refusing to wear your mask and stuff. And like I understand that here it's like a free country, so they can't just make a law. Um, but in Bahrain, you get fined. Like, yeah. You like 200 bucks almost Sorry. <laughs> like 200 bucks it's like if you're not wearing your mask and you refuse to put it on you get fined so we didn't really have a problem with people not putting their mask on um i think the biggest problem was people staying inside because their culture is um very they like to be around each other you know they um very social people i think and um especially because they have so many holidays um like Ramadan, especially like after that, um, what is it called? I forgot. Uh, iftar. If wait, no. Oh yeah, I think they have an iftar dinner at the end of the, um, the day for Ramadan, and and they just have like this whole celebration at the end of fasting. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, everyone had to wear a mask. Now, were there specific restrictions for kids and um, underage? Folk. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so at the end of our tour, when we were there, we could not go to the store. They would not allow kids to go to the like just the grocery store to pick something up. We couldn't go. Um, movies, movies mall. parks, malls. Yeah, they were all shut down for kids. And if you didn't have your vaccine, like if you didn't, because they would give you a card and to go into stores and stuff, you would have to show them your card. So if you didn't have a vaccine, you were pretty much locked down as well. And even if you had the vaccine, you still had to wear a mask. And there were a lot of restrictions, especially for kids. <laughs> also, Bahrain being so close to the equator was like 108 degrees outside normal. <laughs> uh, lowest was like 75, and that was during the winter. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, so wearing your mask was definitely a difficulty. But the people there already were wearing like hijabs and stuff because they were Muslim. So um, they didn't have much trouble with masks or anything. So what's like the longest you were locked in your house or like didn't leave a week or two weeks, a month? <laughs> a couple of months. A couple of months. I would like every week I would go on a sleepover with um, my dad's best friend's daughter because <laughs> we were just like all best friends <laughs> and they also had a son named Gary and he loved Kayla <laughs> but I would go on a sleepover with her every week but that was like the only time I left the house <laughs> and I kind of became um, <laughs> anti-social a little bit I didn't really like going out and getting ready like I didn't want to get out of my PJs so I was in the house all the time every day all day there was a while, like around Halloween, I think, I made a nice group of friends and I hung out with them for like two weeks straight. And then we came here to America and I kind of got back into the routine of just sticking to myself. And plus school, because we did online school and I was not really motivated, so I kind of got backed up on school a lot so I couldn't go out until I finished it. So that also something. And yeah, it, I think I long maybe two months I didn't go outside. Sometimes I would go to the grocery store with my mom or go to base with them, but that was a rare occasion. <laughs> and there also weren't many activities to do there, so there was swimming was pretty much like all you could do. <laughs> like before the lockdown too? Because in our backyard we had a pool and then a beach.
and that was it. <laughs> Pool, beach, swim, nothing else. <laughs> Were you very wrinkled? <laughs> yeah. So um, going forward, then, do you think um, – you're excited to go back to like school in person or do you want to stay out of person or like at home? Like, how do you think it changed the way you interact with other people? It's different for both of us. So I really want to go back and see people, but uh, I want to go back to online school. I'm not ready to go <laughs> and see people every day because I like to have my breaks up from people and having to see people and talk to people every day. I'm not I'm I'm not really prepared for that, so I kind of want to go back to online school. All right, so we covered a spectrum of military life, COVID life, teenage girl life, um, everything in between, and it was a pleasure um, having you on our show and chatting with us about life, yeah. teenage life. So that's Brian and Melissa out. Ciao, ciao. Yeah. So here we are with Sir Isaac of the Third Quadrant, as so called by his owner, me. And uh, I hear that he has a quite a fascinating background. Can you tell us a little bit about it? There you go, folks. And uh, I hear that you're also a very skilled serviceman. Oh, oh that's good, boy. Ready? Now high five. Hey, Tim. Go. Come on. <laughs> good boy. Ready, Army? Army? Army, go boy, army, army, <laughs> go boy, army. <laughs> so, this is a military episode, and we know he's a knight, Sir Isaac. We know he can army crawl. My last question for you is, I've heard you've taken lately to a Cheez-Its diet. How has that affected your, shall we say, back-end deployment? Apparently, this soldier likes to keep things confidential. This is Brian and Melissa Life Talks, out. <laughs>